In today's lesson, we will talk about characteristic roots and eigenvalues of a matrix. Characteristic roots or eigenvalues of a matrix are also known as characteristic values or proper values or latent values. So let's see how we can find out these characteristic roots or eigenvalues of a given matrix. Before finding out this, we need to know some more definitions. The characteristic matrix. So let's see what is a characteristic matrix. If we have a matrix A, then its characteristic matrix can be obtained by A minus lambda i, where lambda is a scalar and i is the identity matrix of the same order of the matrix. So let me write this A here. This is 6 minus 2, 2, minus 2, 3, 1, 2 minus 1, 3, minus lambda and then i of the same order. This is 3 by 3. So this is 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Now this will be 6 minus 2, 2, minus 2, 3, 1, 2, minus 1 and 3 and we'll multiply this scalar inside this will be lambda 0 0 0 lambda 0 0 0 and lambda and now we need to subtract these two matrices this will be 6 minus lambda minus 2 this will be 2 this will be minus 2 3 minus lambda this is 1 2 minus 1 and lastly 3 minus lambda so now this will be the characteristic matrix of the given matrix a we can simply observe that the characteristic matrix can easily be obtained by just subtracting lambda from all the diagonal elements and keeping all the other elements as it is so you can see 6 minus lambda 3 minus lambda and 3 minus lambda next is the characteristic polynomial so to obtain characteristic polynomial, we need to expand the characteristic matrix in the form of lambda. So let's uh, rewrite this characteristic matrix. This will be 6 minus lambda minus 2, 2, minus 2, 3, minus lambda, 1, 2, minus 1 and 3 minus lambda. This is the characteristic matrix A minus lambda I. Now I need to expand this characteristic matrix. We can expand this with respect to any row or any column. Let me expand this with respect to the first row. So this will be 6 minus lambda. Then 3 minus lambda into 3 minus lambda will be a 3 minus lambda square minus minus 1 into 1 will be a minus 1. So we have minus 1. Then minus this is minus of 2. And inside we have minus 2 into 3 minus lambda minus 2 into 3 minus lambda then a minus sign 2 into 1 this will be a 2 then plus the last element this is 2 and now this will be minus 2 into minus 1 will be a 2 minus 2 into 3 minus lambda now we can uh, solve this and write the polynomial and on solving this is coming minus lambda cube plus 12 lambda square minus 36 lambda plus 32. We can see that this is a polynomial in lambda. So this will be the characteristic polynomial of the given matrix A. Now next is the characteristic equation. So let's see what will be the characteristic equation. So once uh, we have got the polynomial, we can write the characteristic equation. So it's written A minus lambda i is equal to 0. So the characteristic equation will take this form. We already have this polynomial. If we write this in the equation form, equating it to zero. So I'm keeping minus common from the whole equation and then keeping it into the mod sign. This will be lambda cube, then minus 12 lambda square plus 36 lambda minus 32 is equal to zero. This equation will be the characteristic equation of the given matrix A that has been obtained from the characteristic polynomial. The next is the characteristic roots or the Egan values. 
Now this is, we can see this is a cubic equation in lambda and on solving this cubic equation, we'll have three roots because this is a cubic equation in lambda. So we have three roots or three values of the lambda. Let's call these three values lambda 1, lambda 2 and lambda 3. Those three values will be called as the characteristic roots or eigenvalues of the matrix A. So let's solve the three values. Let's solve these uh, this cubic equation and find out the characteristic root or Egan values. In this characteristic equation, we'll find out the first value of the lambda by hit and trial method. So let's uh, substitute some values of the lambda and identify whether these are uh, the roots of the equation or not. We can see that there is a constant term. So lambda is equal to zero cannot be the root of this equation. So we'll start with lambda is equal to one. We'll keep lambda is equal to one in this equation and see whether the equation is satisfied or not. So first we'll substitute lambda is equal to one. So this is one cube minus 12 cross one square plus 36 into one minus 32. This has to be equal to zero. This is one minus 12 plus 36 minus 32. This is equal to zero and we can see this left hand side is not equal to zero so lambda is equal to one cannot be the root of this equation so now let's substitute the next value lambda is equal to two this will be two cube minus 12 into two square plus 36 into two minus 32 this is equal to zero this will be eight minus 12 into four 48 plus 36 into 2, 72 minus 32 is equal to 0. So now we can see 8 and 72, this is 80, minus 48 and minus 32, this is also 80. So plus 80, minus 80 cancels out, this is Z, 0 is equal to 0. So for lambda is equal to 2, the equation is satisfied. That means we can see that lambda is equal to 2 is one solution to the equation or this is one characteristic root of the equation. Now we have three characteristic roots. So we need to find out the other two as well. For that, I would like to reduce this equation, this cubic equation into a quadratic equation. And from that quadratic equation, we can easily find out the two roots. So now let me reduce this cubic equation into quadratic equation with the help of first identified characteristic value that is lambda is equal to two. For that, I will write the root here and then I'll write all the coefficients of this equations uh, of the lambda here. So for the coefficient for this lambda cube is 1. The coefficient of lambda square is minus 12. Coefficient of lambda is equal to 36. And this is lambda to the power 0. This is minus of 32. Now I'll start with 0. First I'll multiply this 2 with 0. And the resultant will be right here. Obviously, 2 into 0 will be a 0. Now, I'll perform the operation. This is plus, this is plus, so this will be 1. Now, 2 into 1. I'll multiply 2 with this resultant 1. This is 2 and I'll write here in the next column. Now, I'll perform the operation minus 12 and plus 2. This will be minus of 10. Now, again, I'll multiply this 2 with the resultant 2 into minus 10 will be a minus of 20. Again, I'll perform the operation plus 36 and minus 20 will give us a 16. Now again, I'll multiply this 2 with 16. 16 into 2 will be a 32. And now we can see this is 0. So this is the indication and the last value should be 0. This is the indication that we are performing the operations correctly. Now once we have got this 0, this equation can be reduced to quadratic equation. Now let me write the quadratic equation using three values. This is lambda minus 10 lambda this will be lambda square sorry this is lambda square minus 10 lambda plus 16 this is equal to 0 so we have got this uh, quadratic equation this is the reduced equation from the given cubic equation so we can reduce any cubic equation with the help of one identified value to the quadratic equation and then we can solve this quadratic equation to find out the other two roots of the equation. As we can see, we can factorize this equation. So now let me write this as a lambda square minus eight lambda minus two lambda plus 16 is equal to zero. 
and this can be factorized as lambda minus 8 and lambda minus 2 is equal to 0 from it we have two values of lambda 2 and 8 lambda minus 8 we have 8 lambda minus 2 we have 2 so the other two values of the lambda comes to be 2 comma 8 so now we can see that we have uh, three values of the lambda one is this 2 the other is this 2 and the third one is this 2 so the even uh, values of this a comes to be lambda is equal to 2 2 and 8 these are called as eigenvalues or characteristic roots now let's talk about the properties of these eigenvalues first property any square matrix a and its transpose have same eigenvalues so if for a matrix a the eigenvalues are 2 comma 2 and 8 then its transpose will also have the same eigenvalues 2 comma 2 comma 8 this is the first property second sum of the eigenvalues is equal to the trace of the matrix what is the trace of the matrix trace of the matrix is the sum of all the elements into the principal diagonal now what is the principal diagonal it is 6 3 and 3 so this is the principal diagonal now we need to sum all the elements in the principal diagonal so we have 6 plus 3 plus 3 this is 12 and we can see that the sum of all eigenvalues 2 plus 2 plus 8 this is also 12 so the sum of all eigenvalues 12 is equal to the sum of its trace so or this is equal to the trace of the matrix 12 is equal to 12 so this is the property number 2 next product of eigenvalues is always equal to determinant so that means uh, 2 into 2 into 8 that is 2 to the 4 into 8 that is 32 so 32 will be the determinant of this given matrix you can find out the determinant and verify this property so this determinant of this a will be 32 uh, next is if for a eigenvalues are let's say lambda 1 lambda 2 and lambda 3 then for k dot a that means uh, if i multiply a constant scalar k into a then for this matrix the all eigenvalues can also be obtained by multiplying k into the eigenvalues of a so now let's say if i multiply a with 3 then its eigenvalues will be 3 into 2 that is 6 3 into 2 that is 6 and 3 into 8 that is 24 now for a to the power m its eigenvalues are lambda to the power m lambda 2 to the power m and so on so if we have a matrix let's say uh, if we write a square so now the eigenvalues can be easily obtained by performing squares of all the eigenvalues 2 square 2 square and 8 square now if you want to get the eigenvalues of a to the power 4 then those eigenvalues will be 2 to the power 4 2 to the power 4 and a to the power 4 and the last property a inverse the eigenvalues for a inverse are always 1 upon lambda 1 1 upon lambda 2 1 upon lambda 3 that means if you want to get the uh, eigenvalues of a inverse then that will be 1 upon 2 1 upon 2 and 1 upon 8 so these are the properties of the eigenvalues of character or characteristic roots in the next lesson we will be talking about Cali-Hamilton theorem and Egan vectors thank you so much